Welcome. I follow me is a Samsung Galaxy A51 and today I will share with you a bunch of tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. Now in particular I have about 11 of them. So let's get started. Number one, the thing that you probably already see is the gesture navigation, which is uh, well better and improved on this uh, specific version I guess of Android or Samsung. Not really sure which one is it. Um, but normally uh, if you had Samsung before and you had the apparently uh, gesture navigations you would basically substitute the three buttons that you have on the bottom to just three bars that you have to swipe instead of tapping now i don't call that gesture navigation it's just substituting tapping for swiping it didn't really do much um, but this time around you actually have more just basic like gesture navigation like you should have in my opinion so to get it enabled because it's not enabled by default you want to go on, onto the display and from here we should find somewhere on the bottom navigation bar right here and you want to select full screen gestures and it gives you a tiny animation on how to use it so swipe up to go home swipe from the side to go back swipe and hold to go into recent so back back home recent like so as you can see so it works really well and the specific part of swiping from the side is really convenient and i i personally really like it so uh, this is one of the amazing changes that has been made here So moving on we're gonna go into the dark mode So if you don't like blasting your eyes with pure whiteness, especially when you're using your phone at night Then you can enable the dark mode which will well, change the color scheme to well, in a way inverted So you can see everything is now black and the text is white and that doesn't only stick with the settings It also goes into the notification panels and certain other aspects of the device as well um, so you can see the background seems a little bit darker the search is dark panel everything is basically in a dark mode there's also certain apps that will support the dark mode i'm not really sure which ones it looks like uh, play store is one of them as you will see right now so this is in dark mode as well um, so i assume every google app will be in dark mode um, but anything apart from the Google Apps uh, like Chrome, uh, Gmail and stuff like that will need to implement it on their own uh, or somehow allow Google to change it. So that's a nice change. Now moving on we're gonna go into the Edge panel which is this I don't know if you can see it but there's a bar right here. Now this is the Edge panel and if you swipe on it you'll extend it and from here we have several edge panels that you can go through you can customize them uh, as you see right now i have set to have weather compass um, some screenshot widgets uh, and just an app widget right here and if you want to have additional ones you can tap on the settings right here and it goes to the edge panel where you have the option to toggle off on and off all of them can also scroll and see that there is a bunch more I have reminders clipboards uh, Samsung in a tasks people and stuff like that and if you want to go a little bit further you can also search on the Galaxy store and you will find more in there as well yeah so now moving on we're gonna go into the adaptive sound which in my opinion is really nice uh, feature uh, that is sadly only present i think on the samsung devices uh, but basically what it does is allows you to customize the sound uh, to be tailored to your specific hearing and to do it we want to go into the settings and then sound oops, sound and vibration right here and on the bottom you will find sound quality and effects and here we have the adaptive sound so by default it's gonna set to well default but you also have the cho choices of the preset ones, so under 30, 30 to 60, and 60 and over. So you can choose one of them. Uh, immediately when you're playing music and you select one of them, it will you will hear the effect uh, changed immediately. Um, but if you want to go a little bit deeper, like I said, you can customize it to your specific hearing. It also gives you a uh, basically a guide on how to set it up. So you want to be in a quiet room, and uh, I can confirm this is advised. Um, 
you want to use headphones put them on be in a quiet place and it's gonna basically play sounds on either right or ear uh, ears right right or left uh, side of your ear through the headphones and it's gonna be really quiet and what you need to do is just select if you can hear it or not and depending on what you choose it will then realign the EQ to match your hearing and whatever you can't hear it will boost up whatever you can hear it will lower it down so it's a bit equalized in sounding and it's gonna in my opinion sound way better than whatever the default sounds now I follow for the under 30 so for me that works really well and also the custom one if I would set it up and uh, under 30 uh, at least in my opinion is very similar uh, but that's my personal hearing so your you might have a little bit different and your experience with uh, those might vary keep that in mind so I really advise on just setting this this one up as a new one okay now moving on um, we're gonna go into the also a sound option right here which allows you to lock a specific up into playing from a specific source uh, which again we're in sound and vibration and you have separate up sounds so once you go into here just turn that on and uh, it will actually tell you to it will give you a little setup so you will have to choose what up you want to uh, play or what up needs to use it so you can set up here and it gives you the same thing and as you can see I have YouTube set and then you have audio device and you choose the one the two that are available for me which is a Bluetooth device or phone and now no matter if you're connected to for instance your headphones are plugged in you have some Bluetooth uh, earbuds connected um, if you will launch YouTube and you try to play music it will go straight to the uh, phone uh, so if you want to for instance um, not have the problems of your music player sometimes playing on your phone instead of uh, headphones which I had rarely occasions like that where it did happen then you can just literally force the device to play it only through your earbuds and not be allowed to use the uh, phone sounds so that would be a really nice way of preventing some kind of like weird uh, missteps yeah so moving on we're gonna go into the always on display which oh, is a little bit self-explanatory and I think it's enabled by default uh, it's not on when you like the device but you have to tap once so it shows up like so and it gives you time uh, some uh, notifications if you have some and just a bit, bit of things that are in the notification panels like you can see uh, you can see that uh, to do whatever it's called the the app to benchmark this thing okay and if you want to customize it uh, you can always go into the lock screen so again let's go into the settings and then lock screen and always on display it's right here and you'll have a bunch of options right here that you can mess around so you have clock styles but you can choose what kind of clock style you want for instance you can tap on this um, so you actually have to choose some image um, I just change it to something else there we go let's up and done and now if I like the device oops I didn't want to press it okay so now if I tap on it you will see that the clock is different yeah. and as you also seen there is a few other options right here for you to mess around you can also have it change so uh, right now it's set to top to show you can show always or show as scheduled so customize it to however you like and if you don't like it at all I can just disable it right here as well yeah so moving on we're gonna go into the hiding password which this one is really simple and self-explanatory I'll give you a brief overview of, of what it does before and after there we go so we're now in Wi-Fi uh, I choose Wi-Fi because this is the quickest way for me to actually show uh, passwords so uh, for some reason actually isn't showing any other ones which is would be nice if there will be more whatever I'm just gonna disconnect from that forget and now if I tap on it you will see enter password so whenever I start typing a password you can always see the latest letter I have pressed which in my opinion is a little bit of a security threat so you can go into the settings and completely disable that so you only have the dot so let's go into the 
settings and then we're gonna go into where is the security my metric and security there we go so let's go into here and then other security settings and you'll find this make password visible so disable that because who wants that on and now if you go back and I go into typing the password you don't see a letter anymore which in my opinion is just way better now I'm pretty sure if you're typing a password you know what you're typing in uh, so you don't need to see the latest letter and if you want to know what you typed you can always press right here to see it so that is just a nice change now moving on we're gonna go into smart pop-up view which is for it's an exclusive Samsung thing. Um, imagine a split screen, but better. So let's go into recent apps, and I'm just gonna show quickly show it. So you tap on the icon of the app, and you will get this open in pop up view. So you tap on that, and it opens it up in this tiny little window, which you can also resize, as you will see right now. So it's resized. And this works particularly well for, for instance, YouTube videos. So if I go into Wi-Fi first, so I have something to show. Uh, there we go. Okay, now it's connected. So let's go into YouTube as an example. And I'm going to mute the sound so there is no sound. I just stop right here. Um, get immediately blocked by an ad uh, that doesn't really matter right now so let's go into recent tap on the YouTube icon open and split view and there we go so I can resize it skip the ad set it even further and as you can see it's playing hopefully you can see the countdown so I can normally interact with this, it doesn't matter, it's going to be continuously playing and I can open up any kind of other app, even the apps that are not supported by split screen because right now the device is not split screening, this is just an overlay over the, um, the app that is right now so if there are apps that are for instance not supported in split screen, this won't really matter. Now unfortunately if you do this, like I did go back it minimizes it into this tiny little up head basically and it does pause the music at that time so if, if for instance you go home it does go into small view so you might want to restrain from clicking the, uh, the or swiping up for the home now swiping back doesn't seem to do that so keep that in mind you know i'm just gonna close that for now there we go so moving on we're gonna go into the reduced animation option which you just have a single option here uh, to well reduce the animation that, that's what it says it reduces the animations and to enable that one we want to go into the advanced features which is somewhere on the bar almost on the bottom right here and let's see oh, there we go reduce animations check that on and now animations will be a little bit quicker now if the animations are still not quick enough for you you can always go into the uh, developer options and from there you'll find all the additional ways of reducing on an the animation speed so i'm actually going to go quickly let's assume that you don't actually have the developer options enabled so you want to go into the about phone and from here we're going to go into software information find build number and tap on that seven times where for me it pops up that well developer mode is already turned on for you after seven tap it will say that you are now a developer and from here you can go back to the main setting page and you will find this option on the bottom and in the developer options you want to scroll down i think i might have gone a little bit too far or not there we go so it's right here they have window animation scale transition animation scale and animation duration scale now each one of them corresponds to a different kind of animation so keep that in mind for instance window animation is this window that has pop up here so just as an example i'm gonna set it to 10 times longer than it normally is and now you'll see this uh, excruciatingly long animation 
Now we can also set it to off. And now there's no more animation at all to it. And you can do that for everything. Remove the animations from it altogether. And uh, then anything you do should be instant. As you see, normally the windows would pop up from a side, kind of like slide in. Uh, closing and opening stuff will zoom in or out. This just appears and disappears immediately. Now, if this is too drastic for you, you can always go for the middle ground. So half speed, which will be twice as fast as it normally is. So you will get way faster animation, still improved than whatever the reduced animation option does. Uh, it's not really described. Here we get a definite like end point system. So one is the normal speed, half speed is basically twice as fast. So you have a normal overview of how fast it goes. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna go into the game launcher. Now this is primarily for the people that play games and that don't want to have the up tray cluttered with games. Like for instance, it's right here. You can see that there is several games in here. So if we open game launcher, which is right here, as you see this little thing, let's open it. It's like green. Now I'm opening this up for the first time. So it will ask me all the things that I need uh, for this to be set up. So just up on start. And number one pops with this up. So hide games uh, on home and up screen. And when you tap on that, they will be all removed. And also add game launcher to home screen. Now this is optional. You can, it will just create a shortcut on your home screen uh, apart from the one that is in your app tray. So I'll just disregard this one, tap on okay. And now you can see that we have uh, all the apps right here or games and if i were to go back into the app tray there is no more games here so they're all removed and they're all residing in the game launcher itself from where you can launch them and also launching them from here uh, gives you the additional options to for instance block notifications when you're playing uh, boost your device so it performs better in the game so it's specifically designed for this purpose only and it does it fairly well and you can go into the three dots right there and also settings to customize the settings even further on how it basically affects games and the device itself okay so leaving this now moving on to the next one we're gonna go into the um what is it gonna be the uh how was it called the split screen so if i could only get it there we go no <laughs> okay so normally as you see me before launch the uh, pop-up view there is also a split screen view right here above it and when you tap on it it just opens up one up above the other uh, so whichever one you launch first it will be on top and the second one that you open will be on the bottom now by default whenever you set an app to to be in split screen it will open up the recent apps only as you can see right now these are only the recent apps but you can actually swipe up and it will take you home where you well, have access to every other app if you wish to now keep in mind like i said before not every app is supported in split screen so if you open certain ones that are not which for instance camera is most certainly not or apparently it is in this and this phone so uh that's nice that's actually really surprising um is there something that isn't in this case so it looks like every app is now supported so that's really nice uh or maybe not every but well the primary apps that before weren't supported are now so you actually can launch most of the apps in split screen it looks like but it allows you to use two different apps at the same time interact with them have it split in between two different screens you can resize it as if you like to have it smaller or bigger as you see right now and you can do two things at once so we can open up some kind of feed up on the top read some book on the bottom your imagination is the limit of what you want to do with it but that is how you launch it i just close this but this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that i want to share with you and if you found any of them don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching